Hello and welcome back to day 11 of 100 Days of Clarity. Today we're going to pick up right where we left off in terms of exploring variables and how we can now write or update to variables. But before we get into that, there's one little note or one little lesson that we need to review before, you know, var setting a variable. So it's, and it's this one previously and up to this point, every function we've written, and you can tell by the name of the function, by the type of function define read only, every type of function we've written has only read values, which again, if you're trying to interact with a blockchain, reading a value shouldn't require too much, you know, security or making sure that, you know, that someone can't access it or, or anything of that sort. Because at the end of the day, you're not changing anything. So the blockchain doesn't need consensus, the transaction, a transaction doesn't need to go through and be confirmed. And we don't need to check that the value updated makes sense or, or will work with the rest of the contract. Um, well, sorry, the, the read values don't have to. Today, when we cover write values, it's going to require us to introduce another data type that's similar to optionals, but not exactly the same. Uh, what are the similarities? Well, they're both wrapped values, right? An optional is a wrapped value of one of the other data types, or it could be none. This second data type is called a response. And a response, as the name suggests, is a response to any function that actually creates change or AKA writes to the contract. So whenever you're going to write or update the contract, you're going to have to use, you're going to have to check that everything went okay at the end by using a data type called a response. Um, and as you'll see, the response data type has two values. It either responds with an okay message and as the name implies, okay means everything went well, this is gonna be written and updated, or it's gonna return with an okay type, or it's gonna return with an error type, which as the name implies, an error type is when something went wrong when writing this value. And I wanna make it clear how important these response types are. These response types are almost always found at the end of functions as the last line. Uh, why? because the response type has a very special property where again, if it's an okay message, an okay type, cool, everything will be updated and this block will be submitted. Or sorry, this transaction will be submitted to the mempool. But on the other hand, if it fails and we get an error type, what's special about the response is it doesn't just stop the function it goes back up the logic tree and reverts anything that might have happened up until that point. And so as you can see, that's an extremely, extremely powerful and useful future when we wanna be very, very careful of what we are submitting to the blockchain. Um, and so that being said, responses are, in, are important, important, important where whenever we want to write a function that updates or writes to it or writes to a contract, you have to use a response as a last line. And so with that being said, we talked about earlier that there are three general types of functions in Clarity, right? There's define read only, there's define public, and there's define private. We've checked over define read only today and moving forward for the rest of the days, we'll, we're gonna be using define public. Now, the difference between define public and define read only is simple. You wanna use define public when you are writing or changing or, any, or changing anything on a contract because define public functions are required to have a response as a final value in, you know, in the line of logic. So, with that being said, we've now talked about responses and we talked about how they flow into define public functions and how both of those together will allow us to now write or update variables. So with that being said, I know it was a little bit longer than most of our intros. I wanna make it clear responses are not 
the easiest thing to work with. It will take time to sink in just like optionals did. But with that being said, let's go back up, open up our Clarity file, Clarity Basics 2, open up our terminal, and let's get cranking with examples. Let's comment in day 11. Today we are dealing with public functions and responses. And then first, I actually just want to show you guys what a response looks like even when you're not writing. Because again, a response is a wrapped value. So you can use it even if you don't need to make sure that what you're writing to uh, you know, will make sense. So for example, we can use a response in a define read-only function. Let's call this response example. And in the body, we're literally just going to say parentheses, OK, U10. And that's it. That's all we need to implement a response, uh, a response here. So if we go back to our terminal, we run, we press up, and we try running response example, we'll see that we won't get the unwrapped value of U10, but we will get the response of OK, U10. And indeed we do. Again, just like wrapped, just like optionals can be unwrapped, and we'll be doing that shortly, responses can also be unwrapped. And so responses can be very valuable if you want to use them somewhere in the middle of a function to write something, but you still need to check that writing in that line went well. So let's go back to our example here. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to var we're going to update a name. And so remember in line 36, we created a variable called your name. We're now going to go ahead and write a function that lets us update that variable. So, okay, for the first time ever, instead of writing define read only, write in define public. Awesome. And if you press tab, we see it's exact same setup. So let's call this, uh, change name and the parameter again we're going to provide a parameter here let's call this new name that's the name of the parameter and then what type is this well we want this to be a type of string specifically string ascii 24 the exact same type of string that we defined in line 36 and then in the body all we're going to do is var set. And now instead of var get, we're going to var set your name. That's the name of the variable that we're grabbing, right? Define in line 36. And now we're just changing your name to whatever you pass in. So new name. And if we try saving now, we're going to see that clarity is going to yell at us. Why? Well, again, whenever you use a public function, you must, you must check that the last response is positive or it was an okay type. So you can see the error message here. It says public functions must return an expression of, t of response found Boolean. That makes sense. Var set, whether a variable was uh, updated or not returns Boolean. But when we're using define public, we need to check that it returned positively or, you know, it, it changed the variable and everything went well or it returned true. And so to fix this really simply, all we need to do is wrap our function, sorry, wrap this body with okay, close parentheses, and that's it. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try our example and what we're going to do is we're going to change our name. So let's change name. And then we're going to say hi again. So first, let's spin up the contract again. And first, I actually want to run say hi. So you guys see what we see there. Hi, Jesus Nahara. Now we're going to call, instead of say hi, we're going to call the function change name. And then again, what name do we want to change to? 
Well, let's test something out. So let's try, you know, Jordan C. In parentheses, and if you press enter, awesome. And notice the response type. The response type isn't okay, Jordan C. It's okay, true. Again, why? Well, because when we use varset to update your name to Jordan C, that function varset returned true. It said, hey, what you did was good. And so since we have that function inside the response, which returned an okay type because everything went well, we see that the response is okay type true because it was updated. And so now if we run say hi again, just pressing up, up twice, we indeed get hi Jordan C. As you can see, there was an error there because I forgot a space. We update it again and hi Jordan C. Okay, I mean, we could do the same with favorite number. So I'm just gonna go ahead, write up the exact same function, do doubling with favorite number, and we're gonna go ahead and call it for then. Again, we covered a lot conceptually in terms of responses and define public. And so I just wanna give you guys examples using varset, keep it simple. So first let's do change favorite number. And then in the body, again, all we wanna do is call varset. Well, what number do we, um, do we, what variable do we wanna update? We wanna update favorite num var. And then what do we want that value to be? Well, that's simple enough. Uh, well, sorry. Well, we want it to be updated to, to some new value that we're providing in the parameter. So new num you int and we're var setting favorite new number to new num press save and again we got the same error because this is a public function that we're not ending with a response so we need to fix that okay we save this works well we're going to go ahead and try the exact same things so spin the contract up again First, let's do show var double. We get 22 because currently the, val the variable is 11, our favorite num variable. We're gonna go ahead and change that, calling our new function new number or new num. Let's pass in a value of 25. And, Oh, sorry, this failed because the name of the function is not new num, that's the name of the parameter or argument or input. The name of the function is change favorite num. So again, gotta get used to these errors. Okay, true. And now if we run show var double, we indeed get you 50. Okay. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up day 11. Um, I wanna say, we should be getting very, very excited because we are now actually a day or two or maybe three away from writing our first full smart contract. So independent of these little exercises that we've been doing in Clarity Basics 1, Clarity Basics 2, pretty soon you're going to be writing your very first smart contract and deploying that on testnet and or mainnet. So thank you for sticking around. Keep coding, keep practicing, keep shipping. I'll see you tomorrow for day 12.